Welcome to the second part of the skills of assertiveness. In this exercise, we are going to introduce you to steps four, five, and six. Using the skills of assertiveness can help you navigate through any conflict that might arise in your interpersonal relationships. Still, it is a skill that requires effort and re-education of your previous communication patterns, but it can be gradually learned and incorporated in daily life. Without further ado, the second part of the assertiveness skills includes getting information, saying no in a way that doesn't damage the relationship, and acting according to your values. Let's start. Skills of assertiveness, part two. Skill four, getting information. In the first part, we cover the skills knowing your priorities, asking for what you want in a way that protects the relationship, and negotiating. After we've let the other person know that we are willing to hear their point of view and work out a mutual solution, the next step is to ask for information about the other person's opinions, emotions, needs, and fears. This is usually done in a mutually validating and respectful way. It is important to note that it is very common to unconsciously make assumptions about what the other person thinks or wants and to act accordingly even though those assumptions may not be true. This is why it is useful to be mindful of whether or not we are jumping to conclusions. Instead, we can ask questions about the other person's view, emotions, and needs. Think about an important relationship and a current or recent conflict that you had. Take the worksheet and write down how you would ask the other person about what they feel or think about the situation. What would you say? Pause the video and take several minutes to do the exercise. Good job! Skill 5. Saying no in a way that doesn't damage the relationship. After you've communicated your priority regarding the conflict in a polite and assertive way, and you gathered information about where the other person stands, you can choose what kind of compromise you will make. It is completely normal if some aspects of the negotiation are acceptable to us and some not. This part of the assertiveness skills focuses on setting a healthy boundary to some of the requests that are made by the other person. Try to do it in an assertive yet respectful way. After all, this is not a contest. Setting a boundary is a useful and healthy process that we shouldn't feel guilty about. As long as you are not conveying your message in an aggressive way, this skill can help you maintain a quality relationship. Think about the relationship from the previous step. How would you say no and put boundaries on some of the requests that were or might be made? Think about it for a while and write your answers in the worksheet. Great, let's move on to the last assertiveness skill. Skill six, acting according to your values. Acting according to your values can refer to one, what motivates you to make the requests in the conflict, and two, what types of relationships you want to foster. First, think about what your motivation is behind the requests that you are trying to make in the relationship. What is the thing that is important to you? Do you want better connection? More time spent together? Quality conversations? And being present? Think about it. Second, try to think about what types of relationships you want to foster. Relationships that are based on honesty, mutual validation, trust, and support tend to last longer and be healthier and more beneficial than the ones that are based on the opposite values. Write down your answers in the worksheet. Well done! In the next exercise, we are still working on some assertiveness scripts that you can readily use in your assertive communication. See you in the next video!